First item on the agenda is the minutes of the previous meeting. Are there any changes or notations from the members? Mr. Emery? Uh, I move that the minutes be uh, adopted as written. Second. We have a motion that's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. <laughs> Unanimous. Correspondence received with this week's packet, the Zoning News, May 1998, the Zoning News of June 1998, a letter from Chief Pickering uh, in regards to the Sprague subdivision, and the final report of the Telecommunications Facilities Task Force. Also a letter from Michael McGovern concerning appointments to the Town Farm Ordinance and Easement Drafting Committee, dated July 14, 1998, and a letter from Nancy Woodward, dated May 9th. Uh, May 29th, 1998, that'll read into the minutes of the meeting later this evening. <clears throat> Only item on the agenda this evening on the new business is the Lacey Daycare Facility Site Plan. The applicant come forward and identify themselves and just give us a quick overview, please. My name is Sharon Lacey. I live at 166 Ocean House Road. Um, for the past year and a half, I've operated a licensed daycare for six children in my home. I'm here to ask for approval to expand this daycare to a maximum of 12. I have many requests for care. We live in a two-family home. My husband and I live in the first floor, where I also operate the daycare. Our son and family live on the second floor. They plan to move out in, in the next year. <laughs> Our goal is to live on the second floor and devote the entire first floor for the daycare. We are in compliance with state licensing and fire marshal regulations. State regulations require 420 square feet for 12 children of indoor space. We have 969, excluding the kitchen and bath. A play yard for 12 children would require 900 square feet, we have 1,200. There are no plans for physical changes to the site. Any questions of the board? Chairman, yes. the question uh, comes up on the sanitary waste disposal. disposal and the uh, water supply, solid waste disposal. Would you comment on that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the water supply is the municipal water supply, Portland Water District. And solid waste is two 1,000 gallon septic tanks with a chamber system uh, for leach field. And uh, I'd mentioned the, the engineer's report mentions that, uh, I can't find it, but it's here, mentions that the appears that the septic system would be adequate. Uh, let's see, it's If I may, Mr. Lacey, Maureen might be able to help with that. Um, I had the building inspector check the file, and there's an HHE 200 form on file that shows what the new septic system is, that what capacity it has in there, and it has a capacity to serve two dwelling units. And if you eliminate one of the dwelling units, the capacity that's left over um, exceeds the capacity you would need for a daycare for 12 children using the plumbing code. Thank you. That's what I meant to say. I wasn't aware that that was on file. My understanding was that. We, we checked it, and it happened to be one <coughs> afternoon where the town engineer had dropped by, <coughs> the building inspector, and the two of them worked out the calculations right in front of me. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Parkhurst. Make a motion. <coughs> Be to order that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Shireen, or Shireen, sorry, is it Shireen? Shireen. Okay, sorry. And Paul Lacey for site plan review to expand from a home daycare 
to a daycare facility for up to 12 children located at 166 Ocean House Road be deemed complete? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion in regards to completeness? All those in favor, please raise your right hand in regards to completeness. It is unanimous. Now the appropriate time for the public hearing. We will now open a public hearing on this matter. It should be noted to those watching at home that there is no one else in the auditorium. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I think there's someone outside the door. <laughs> we do, however, have a letter from Mary Nancy Woodward of 172 Ocean House Road, Cape Elizabeth. She could not be here this meeting and asked our planner if she could have this letter read into the record. I will do so at this time. To the members of the planning board, in regards to the request to upgrade to a daycare facility for 12 children at 166 Ocean House Road by Paul and Shereen Lacey. I have lived in this neighborhood for 52 years and wish it to remain as residential as possible. After the Lacey's original request was granted in fall of 1996, I spoke with Mr. Lacey while we were walking to our cars, expressing that my feelings were not personal. I stated that the concern of more and more children being involved he assured me absolutely not. His wife was trained in specific and in specialized infant care. Now, less than two years later, the request is for three times the original number of children. 164 and 166 Ocean House has been a two-family home since the 1940s. Only one, other, only one other time the families were related to each other. I believe making one of these residents into a business is a, di a different issue entirely. If the board easily grants this request, the theory of get your foot in the door, be a little patient and you can do what you want. It will seem valid. Thank you very much. Sincerely, Nancy Woodward. Any other comments for the public hearing? Hearing none, I shall close the public hearing. We can now take the matter of approving or not approving this matter before the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Emery. Or Mr. Chair. Uh, just a couple of issues. Uh, for the record, was it stated that this had received Zoning Board of, of uh, Appeals approval? Uh, with respect to uh, Nancy... It did receive the Zoning Board of Approval. Okay. It's listed right in the application. Okay, thank you. Uh, with respect to Nancy Woodward's uh, letter, the merits of this particular applicant notwithstanding, I think she has a valid concern and issue. Uh, these issues that she's expressing, however, really reside with the zoning board, the issues of nuisance to the neighborhood, uh, traffic, sort of the, the uh, use-related issues, whereas the planning board deals more with the site plan-related issues. And by the time the applicant application, this type of application comes to the planning board, there's really not a lot that the planning board can do to uh, deny an application based on the proposed use. We can ask for more lights, we can ask for more screening perhaps, and even the zoning board might want to do that if it's uh, appropriate to the particular application. But I would suggest uh, to anyone if, where they might be tonight watching this or if they see it on tape replay that the idea of uh, use changing from two, three, four, five, or six children to 12 children anywhere within the residential neighborhoods within Cape Elizabeth, if that is a concern, perhaps everyone should assume that their next door neighbor at some point would come before the zoning board and to the planning board requesting to have a daycare center that might have as many as 12 children. And if each individual expresses the same concerns or feels the same concerns that Nancy Woodward uh, expresses in her letter, I think it would be appropriate to contact their counselors and through the public process get the ordinance revised in such a way that either areas are specifically uh, defined much like they are in the business district or other concerns are, are put into the ordinance so that uh, one isn't surprised moving into a quiet neighborhood and suddenly finding uh, a daycare center with 12 children next door or perhaps even more children. And that's really the only way that I think the public can be appeased through this process. I think on a, uh, an application by application basis, once it gets past the zoning board, there's not a lot that's going to happen uh, at this board level uh, that's going to change much in an application unless it's 
either woefully lacking or something that the zoning board has uh, really overlooked. Uh, this happens to be a fairly large lot. It's a large house. There's a lot of room for uh, uh, maneuvering within the driveway and turnaround areas. It's on a fairly busy street. It's not on a dead-end cul-de-sac. Um, so for those reasons, I, I don't have any specific reasons that I would uh, deny this application. I think uh, the other thing I'd like to note is the material that was presented, although it's not our typical engineered site plan, engineered this, engineered that, the photographs and the materials that were put together, I think, make it very easy for the planning board to understand the nuances of the property. And, and uh, I think it's a, a terrific job um, by the applicants. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Emery. Any other members' comments? May the chair have a motion? <coughs> Mr. Parkhurst. <coughs> Findings of fact. Number one, Shireen and Paul Lacey would like to expand from a home daycare to a daycare facility for up to 12 children located at 166 Ocean House Road, which requires site plan review. Number two, the Zoning Board of Appeals granted conditional use approval on May 26, 1998, and the Planning Board deemed the application complete on July 21, 1998. Number three, the zoning ordinance requires that lighting be provided to ensure the safety of people in the vehicle pickup and drop-off areas. Number four, the natural wooded area along three sides of the site protects abutting properties from the impacts of the daycare facility. Number five, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. <coughs> Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Shireen and Paul Lacey for site plan review to expand from a home daycare to a daycare facility for up to 12 children located at 166 Ocean House Road be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, the applica applicant provide adequate lighting in the area of child pickup and drop off. Number two, that the existing wooded buffer along the perimeter of the property be maintained. Second. Second from Mr. McNichols. Any further discussion? I have a question. Yes, Mr. Emery. Mr. Chair. Uh, there was an issue that the applicant would have to convert the house from a two-family house to a single-family house. Is that part of the zoning approval? Do we, need, we don't need to make that a condition of this approval. No. And, and I think you were the one that asked the question about whether they'd be able to go back to a two-family at a later date. After mm. one year, they would not be able to. Okay. Uh, in the event that, uh, for whatever reasons, uh, this use turns out to be more troublesome, more noisy than uh, anyone expects, uh, would the abutters have a recourse to come back to the zoning board or, or through the code enforcement process to deal with any issues that are construed to be a nuisance within the quiet neighborhood? Well, under, under our existing ordinances, um, if, if their sole complaint was that there was too much noise, um, there would be very little that the code officer could do. If they had complaints, say, for example, that they were cutting down all the trees or they'd taken down the fencing or they, you know, never had converted the house, those are issues that, are, that relate to the planning board approval or the zoning board approval and can be enforced. But if, if no, if it, for whatever reason, I mean, if, if these, you know, the, the children, for whatever reason, if they were doing some activity that was unreasonably noisy, would it not be possible for an abutter either through the uh, code enforcement process or through the normal whatever the processes are within town? I don't know if you call up the uh, police department and make a complaint about noise. Well, yeah. It's kind of like if you're having a really loud party. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You still have that option. I, I, and I guess my point is that, that uh, and it's, again, it's not particular to this application. The point is that if, if uh, abutters are, are uh, finding that the approved uses are not compatible with the neighborhoods once the use has been uh, approved. There are other avenues uh, so that uh, something could be done either through enforcement or police action, so to speak. Thank you. Any further discussion from board members? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Lacey. Thank you. <clears throat>
just have, if, if I could, I'd like to echo um, what Tom Emery said about possibly having the ordinances looked at um, for future um, daycare facilities in the town. Everyone that seems to come before us is upsetting to the neighbors in one fashion or another, and I, we haven't seen the results of these actually being expanded at this point. And I'm not sure exactly what can be done to tighten things up other than possibly carving out particular areas of town which can have these in them. If that's all we can do, I think that needs to be seriously looked at. And I, would, <clears throat> I, for one, would recommend that that be done. What would be the process, Maureen, for us to push to get it rolling? Because we've talked about it for a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, the council held a public forum last year, a year ago, March, on daycare uses. And I would be more than happy to share uh, the kind of an issue paper, it's not very long, on the status of daycare in Cape Elizabeth uh, from that, that report. I could give the planning board that report for the next workshop and you could take a look at it. Um, you know, one of the conclusions you can draw from that report if you compare Cape Elizabeth to our, quote, comparison communities is that we actually have fewer daycare facilities than all of our surrounding communities. I could see how that's possible because of we're a community that where the double income family is, is probably in the majority. And when that happens, following we need that, daycare. Yeah, following that, that public forum, I mean, there was, there was certainly a move by one side to have the ordinances tightened up. Uh, there were several daycare providers who felt that the ordinances were, uh, were pretty tough now. They were okay with that, but they, they thought we were pretty strict to begin with. I think the council, well, the council, I think, decided that to leave well enough alone, that the ordinance seemed to be working all right. Uh, but certainly, I could, you may want to take a look at that, that report, and uh, obviously, you can always make a recommendation of the council. I think our ordinance has worked extremely well as far as, far as providing a safe environment for the, the children, and members of the daycare center, but they don't do very much as far as protecting the, the value of adjoining property when it is a concern to the neighborhood. I just have a question for you, Maureen. Should we go into workshop to take care of this letter from Mr. McGovern? I think the deadline on that is September. And we have lots of time then. Yeah. Good. If I hear nothing from the board, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Mr. McNichols? Second. Seconded by Mr. Parkhurst. <coughs> All those in favor? A new record. 16 minutes past 7. May this go down in town history. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for those of us who joined us at home. We are now adjourned. You telecommunications. <clears throat> we should bring that workshop. Excuse me. <clears throat> Thank you.